Hey, I'm Karama. Welcome to my review for Call of Duty World War II on the PS5. Now, the reason I'm making a video about this game on the PS5 specifically is because the PS5 it can play PS4 games, and it does this through a mix of uh, running it natively and a little bit of emulation. And it doesn't always get it perfect. There have been some cases where a game can have some, you know, visual bugs or glitches, or that it didn't have on uh, the original PS4 consoles. So. I thought I'd make a video about this game, and uh, I'll do more videos about covering games, uh, PS4 games right on the PS5, because, you know, there ha I have played some games on the PS5 that are originally PS4 games, and they just don't really wor run or work that well on the PS5, and they have problems that I think people should know about, and, you know, I just don't see a lot of people on the internet talking about uh, some of these games that have problems, so I thought I'd uh, shed some light on them. Um, you know, I'm not only doing games that have problems, you know, some of them will be, like, you know, perfect, just nothing wrong with them. And, um, so yeah, let's go, let's get into Call of Duty World War II. So I think it's important that I mention how this game ran on PS4 and PS4 Pro. On PS4, Call of Duty World War II runs out of fixed resolution of 1080p. And on PS4 Pro, it uses a dynamic resolution scaling system. Which means, uh, the game will raise or lower the resolution depending on how much stuff is happening on screen. Like, if it's getting quite demanding for the, uh, console to run it, then it'll lower the resolution to keep the frame rate stable. And so, on PS4 Pro, Call of Duty World War II, it could go from 4K uh, all the way down to 1620p. Now, you know, playing this on a PS4 Pro, you wouldn't really notice this unless you have, like, a really good eye for resolution. And I think it is good that the developers focused for f frame rate over resolution. Like, they could have made it a locked 4K and not have it drop ever. But then the frame rate probably wouldn't be able to keep up. It wouldn't have been a lock 60 experience. And I think, you know, pretty much all the time, frame rate is always more important than resolution. So that was a good decision they made. And it works very well. They do have a pretty good dynamic resolution scaling system. On um, PS4, it stays at 1080p. It doesn't move. And um, both consoles, the frame rate's pretty much locked. I mean, you have a hard time finding drops in the campaign or the multiplayer or zombies. I think really the only time where you'll find frame rate dips is in split screen mode which is to be expected because the game is rendering like twice the amount of stuff but the game looks and runs very well on the ps4 um, family of consoles it's a very good way to play the game you're not missing out on anything it's not a compromised experience compared to other platforms definitely a good way to go if you're looking to play this game and also a few months ago it did come out for free on playstation plus that's how i got it and so um, check if you have it downloaded you might have it in your library you might have forgotten about it but let's go on to PS5. So when PS5 is running PS4 games in backwards compatibility mode, you know, it'll start off with the PS4 Pro settings, and then typically if there's any, like, um, frame rate dips that the PS4 Pro version of the game had, the PS5 will smooth it out. The backwards compatibility mode isn't able to use all the power of the PS5, but it's definitely able to use some of it, and that's exactly what's happening here with Call of Duty World War II on the PS5. I can tell you that I have not experienced a single frame frame rate dip in this game at all. It has been perfect. Lock, if, lock 60 FPS. It does not budge, even in split screen mode. It is just amazing. Really great way to play the game, and also the dynamic resolution scaling system. I said earlier, you know, how it could dip if there is, like, a lot of graphical intensity happening on the screen, all the way down to 1620p. But I don't think the resolution drops at all on the PS5. I think it stays at native 4K the entire time. So the game looks and runs beautifully on the PS5. I don't think there's any weird graphical bugs or glitches that weren't there on the PS4 Pro version of the game that I've seen. I haven't noticed anything weird at all or strange. It does load faster than the PS4 Pro version, just slightly, only a little bit. Again, um, backwards compatibility mode isn't able to use all the power of the PS5, especially its new SSD. So it's not really taking advantage of that. So loading times aren't really going to be improved too crazy much uh, over their PS4 versions. For that to happen, the game has to receive a PS5 version. This is just a basic PS4 version of the game. It has received no update for the PS5. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this game has turned out on PS5. It's everything you would want it to be. It looks great and it runs perfectly. It loads faster than before. I think that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you've found this video informative or helpful to you in any way, if this influenced your decision on whether you want to buy the game to play on PS5 or not, uh, please let me know in the comments below. And also, you know, drop any suggestions for games you have down there that you would like me to review or play on the PS5. 
and I'll see you in the next one.